Welcome to the Church in the Country podcast with Pastor Jordan Wilson. Weekly messages for folks with a country state of mind. And now, here's Pastor Jordan with this week's message. I'll tell you what, these camo studies get better and better every year, don't they? Thank you guys for being here so much. I'm Jordan Wilson. I'm a lead pastor here at Church in the Country. And uh, if you're a guest with us today, we say welcome to you. We're so glad you're here. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you back here next Sunday at 1045. But if you do, uh, go on back to your place and, and the worship of the Lord there. But uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out today. I do want to say a special thanks to the folks that made this possible today, uh, our kitchen workers out there, uh, so faithful every Sunday morning. And now for Campbell Sunday, putting everything together for us, the barbecue. Uh, let's give it up for our kitchen people this, this morning. And also, uh, I want to say thank you to Carol Darcy. Carol also works in the kitchen, but she also sets everything up here. I know we have some others helping out with decorations too. So thank all of you that helped with decorations. Uh, you do not go unnoticed by me and by others. Your, your work here is, is very much appreciated. So thank you for that. Uh, this morning for, for all that you do here at Church in the Country. And uh, Country Boy Smoking with Kevin Stark. How was the food today? Was it pretty good? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Can you guys hear me okay? Everybody good? Well, we're going to have a little message here in just, just a few moments, and then we're going to give away some prizes. I know you guys are anxious to, to, to see if you can win something. But if you're a guest here, I want you to know this. We we preach in uh, in series uh, format. So basically, we'll preach five or six weeks, six weeks at a time, kind of kind of around a central topic. And this this current series that we're in is called the Lame Duck Series. So let me just kind of recap for everybody a little bit about what, what, what we've been talking about. Most of us, when we hear the Lame Duck term, we associate that with a political term, and that is very much uh, relevant because uh, there is such thing as a, as a Lame Duck political person. But we're not talking about that in that sense so much. We're talking about Lame duck. When we say lame duck, we're referring to a person that is weak or falls behind in ability or achievement. A lame duck is a person who is disabled, helpless, ineffective, or inefficient. You might call them a weakling. Now, as I say that, most of us will say, you know what? I don't want to be a lame duck. Nobody wants to be a lame duck. Nobody wants to have that characterize who they are. No one wants to be weak. But we've seen over the last few weeks that actually it's not all that bad to be weak, right? 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10 says this. The word says, Paul says, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and in the hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then what? I am strong. It's not all bad being weak, amen? When we're weak, who's strong? I'm strong because God is strong in and through me. So being a lame duck, being a weakling, is not all that bad. The reality is we are all born broken. We are all born weak. We are all lame ducks from day one. We live in a world full of lame ducks, a world full of human brokenness. And thankfully, we serve a God today that has solved that problem, that offers us a solution to you where you are this morning to help you with your weakness and your brokenness. But all of us have weaknesses. All of us have, have made mistakes. Everyone in this room has completely blown it. If you would say this morning that, it, that there's been a point in your life, one time or another, that you have completely blown it, would you raise your hand? Every single person in this room raises their hand. All of us have blown it at one time or another even the best of who God used most of the time. If you read the word of God, you will see that they blew it, totally blew it. And they had pretty significant weaknesses and issues like Paul when he, when he said this. So what do we do with that? Knowing that's a fact, knowing that's the truth about who I am and about who you are, what do we do with that? I'll tell you this, you and I have a choice to make. Either we can do something with that fact, either we can do something with our weaknesses or it will do something to us. Either we will do something with our weakness or it will do something to us. Which will it be? I came across a good story I want to share with you. I didn't write this, but I thought it was pretty, pretty relevant. There was a little boy that was visiting his grandparents and he was given his first slingshot and it was made by his grandfather. So he practiced with that slingshot all the time, trying to hit a can, but he never could hit anything with this brand new slingshot. 
As he walked across the yard, he saw Grandma's pet duck. On an impulse, he took aim with his slingshot and let it fly. This time, the stone hit and the duck fell dead. He killed the duck. Killed his grandmother's pet duck. The boy panicked and hid the dead duck under an outbuilding, only to look up and see his sister watching. Sally has seen it all, but she said nothing. After lunch that day, Grandma said, Sally, let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, you know, Johnny told me that he wanted to help in the kitchen today. Didn't you, Johnny? And she whispered to him, remember the duck? So Johnny did the dishes. Later, Grandpa asked the children if they wanted to go fishing. And Grandma said, I'm sorry, Grandpa, but I need Sally to help me make supper. And Sally smiled and said, hey, you know what? Actually, Johnny said he wanted to help you make supper. Isn't that right, Johnny? And again, she whispered to Johnny, remember the duck? And Johnny stayed while Sally went fishing with Grandpa. After several days of Johnny doing both his chores and Sally's, uh, finally he couldn't stand it any longer. And he confessed to his grandma that he had killed her pet duck. Grandma said, I know Johnny. I know you killed my pet duck, giving him a hug as he confessed. I was standing at the window and saw the whole thing the whole time. But because I love you, I forgave you. But I wondered how long you would let Sally make a slave of you. I was waiting for you to come to me. Wow. This morning, I would tell you, like grandma, God is at the window. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, Paul says this. For God was in Christ, in Jesus reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them like grandma, right? And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Hey, lame duck out there this morning. If you're listening on the internet, if you're listening on a podcast, if you're here in person, lame duck, let me tell you, whatever it is in your past, whatever you have done, Whatever that thing is that, that the devil, the enemy keeps throwing up in your face. Maybe you, maybe you've lied. Maybe you've cheated. Maybe you've, maybe, maybe you're in debt. Maybe you're fearful. Maybe you've got bad habits or you're, you're, you're hateful or you, you have anger and bitterness inside of you. Whatever it is, you need to know that God has been standing at the window and he's seen the whole thing. He's seen everything that you've done. That's kind of a, Shocking, fearful thing for some of us, isn't it? He's seen your whole life. But even so, this morning, he wants you to know, like grandma, he loves you and you've been forgiven. Psalms 103, verses 10 through 12. My favorite verse says this, that God does not punish us for all of our sins. Thank God. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. And he has removed our sins as far as from the east is from the west. Amen, right? That's a long ways. God wants to forgive. And God has made a pathway for you to be forgiven this morning. And he knows everything that you've done. And he loves you even so. But the enemy, Satan, the devil, like Sally, wants us to hold on to our mistakes and our mess-ups and is, and is constantly whispering into our ears, remember the duck? Remember the duck? Many of us have heard that voice from the past that says, hey, remember the ducks? Remember that duck? The enemy, the enemy like Sally, loves to remind us just how big of a loser we are. And how much of a failure we are. And how much you've blown it. I'll say it three times. I'll say it again. Failure is not a person. It's an event, right? Remember that. A failure is not a person. It's an event. But the enemy wants to tell you that you are a failure. That you are a loser. That's not what God says. But he'll hold that over you. The enemy will. He'll hold that over your head and it will paralyze you and it will keep you from doing the things that God desires for you to do. Satan wants 
to remind us, and he does remind us all the time of our past failures and our past sins. In the book of Revelation, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us. He's like a prosecutor trying to prove to us how bad we are. But while Satan accuses day and night, his accusations are always proven wrong. And that's thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Advocate. First John chapter 2, the Apostle John says this, My dear children, in verse 1, I'm writing this to you so, so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have a what? Advocate who pleads our case before the Father He's the best defense attorney you'll ever get. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but for the sins of the world. Can I tell you that I don't care what you've done, where you've been, where you've come from, what's in your past, Jesus' sacrifice can cover that. It's good enough. It's enough for you. And anything that comes into your mind that tries to make you think otherwise is a lie from hell. You hear me? It is good enough. He is enough for you. And he is enough for me. I don't know what it is about some of us. And inside of us, it's like we have a hard time offering grace to ourselves. We get all bent out of shape about and, and, and twisted up about the the... the the things that we've done in our past, our, our past mistakes. And I understand it. It's, it's easy to fall into that. And because of that, when we, when, we, when we begin to think like that and have those thought patterns in our minds, we become sitting ducks for the enemy, right? Easy, easy to take care of. And he does. And like Sally, the evil one will even bring others against you that will leverage what you've done for their benefit and for the enemy's benefit, for their advantage. Just a side note in here, don't be a Sally, okay? If your name's Sally this morning, I'm sorry, I love you, but don't be Sally. Don't be Sally. Don't be that person that goes around telling everybody, hey, remember the duck? Holding the things over their head like you've got it all figured out, like you've never made a mistake. Don't be that person. Here's the point. Today's God, today's, today God is asking you a question this Camel Sunday, 2022. Just like the grandma asked Johnny in this story. How long will you let the devil make a slave of you? How long will you allow the devil to blackmail you and to hold this stuff over your head? Jesus said this in John chapter 8, verse 34. We're going to close. He said, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. And a slave is not a permanent member of the family. But a son is part of the family forever. Let's read this last line together. Ready? One, two, three. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Amen. How many of you want to be free today? I know I want to be free. I, we live in the greatest country, America, where freedom rings and reigns, but it ain't nothing compared to the kind of freedom you can find in Christ. He really can set you free today. And he invites you to come be a part of his family. Listen, this is a part of God's family right here. There are lots of others that aren't here. There are lots of other churches, whatever. God is inviting you to be a part of, your fam of his family. Maybe you're that person in this room today. You think, you know, I don't have anybody in my life. I'm kind of by myself. Come and join this family. Come be a part of the family of God. His arms are open wide. Our arms are open wide. We love to have you come be a part here at church in the country. But more importantly, understand, lame duck, you've got a father, much like the grandmother in this story, that says to you, hey, I'm not worried about the ducks anymore. If you'll come to me, and you'll just confess that you did it, that you don't have it all together, and lay that pride down at my feet. Listen, I'm here for you. 
I want to take you in. I want to love you. And I want to be your father. And I want to give you a fresh start. I want to give you a second chance. Whatever, wherever you are in life right now, this grace is available to all of us. It's by grace we are saved. Right? By faith, through, through grace. By, by grace, through faith, right? That we're saved. Would you get a hold of God's grace this morning? Would you understand that God loves you right now where you are? Jesus is here this morning, and he wants to meet with you. As we bow our head and close our eyes real quick, I want you to know if you're in this room and Satan's been holding some things over your head, today God says, just come and let's talk. He wants to offer you the new start and the fresh, the fresh start, the second chance that you can only find in him. So Jesus, today I pray, God, if there's anybody in the sound of my voice that would say today that they do not know you, they never have given their life over to you, they're battling with things in their past, maybe they're battling with anxiety and depression, mental health issues, Maybe there's things that have entangled them and, and chained them up for so long. God, this morning we come to you. Jesus, we come to you because you are the one that can untangle us. You are the one that can make us new, that can save us and give us the fresh start we all eagerly need and desire. So if you're in this room this morning, and you never, you've never come to Jesus and said, listen, Jesus, I, I want you. I need you. I'm tired of trying to do this on my own this morning. Would you simply say to him from where you sit, Jesus, I need you in my life. I believe that you pay the price for my sin. Times when I've blown it, Jesus, what you did on the cross, that covers that. And I need you and I want you in my life. We believe here at Church in the Country, if you'll do that very simply, nothing magic about those words, but Jesus will enter into your life. He will change you. He will give you the fresh start. He will give you the abundant life, the full life. Then he'll give you eternal life with him. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised another second, another minute. Don't wait around. Jesus is here today to meet with you. So God, I pray for all of us as we struggle with things like guilt. God, that we would run to you and ask for forgiveness. We would confess our, our sin to you. And God, we would repent and turn and walk the other way. And we ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You've been listening to the Church in the Country podcast with Pastor Jordan Wilson. Connect with Pastor Jordan by emailing him at jordan at churchinthecountry.com. Check out Church in the Country on Facebook or watch our services live every Sunday morning at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time on our Church in the Country YouTube channel. Find out more by logging on to www.churchinthecountry.com.